Hello everyone. This is the East Coast Economic Update for March the 13th, 2009. Uh, I want to, I'm going to probably uh, put some stuff over here. Uh, one article which I found very interesting, and I'm just going to adjust this out of the glare, excuse me. Um, which I found in Bloomberg, which basically expresses that the unemployment rate is at 10%, not 8.1. Peculiar. So anyway, and the other one is I'm going to put on a hyperlink um, also over here uh, is to the Patriot Trading Group's website. There's a video called Inflation versus Deflation, What is the Bigger Threat? And it goes over the details of, you know, basically what I had said about the difference between Weimar and FDR. It kind of goes into more detail, much better than I have done, probably, um, I think. So, and um, that's also interesting. The other issue is uh, that I wanted to bring forth was I had uh, had to leave early yesterday. That's why I did a short video to meet with some of the uh, clothing and shoe reps representatives to look over their fall line. Um, I just wanted to share with you some general uh, information. One, uh, which is fairly deflationary, is we've noticed a drop in some prices on clothing and shoes. More clothing, which is interesting because in, in retail, at, I'm going to once again school you in retail, and in retail, the margins between what you pay, pardon me, what you pay uh, for clothing versus shoes, the clothing has a larger margin. So, in other words, if uh, it, you know, if I buy a shirt that's retailing for twenty-five dollars, I pay about eleven dollars for it. Versus shoes, if it was a hundred dollars, I pay fifty-five dollars for it. So, as you can see. Um, you, you see the, uh, the difference, the margin between my retail and, and wholesale. The larger the margin, the more I can, I can um, lower a price for sale, say for example. So once you hit that 50 percentile, as we talked about in a couple of our other videos, now I'm no longer making even a profit, I'm not even breaking even, I'm just trying to get the, stat, the stuff out. So those margins are dropping more in the clothing, which is a larger margin overall. So the other interesting thing was the conversation I had with a few of the reps that had come by was that a major, a lot of the larger um, retail businesses, I'm a little boutique compared to some of the stores that are in the New York City and metropolitan area in Jersey and so forth, um, have either cut out completely their fall line because they have so much clothing left over even though they had huge sales or they have limited the amount of stuff they've uh, by company. In other words, you know, if you have three companies, I'm going to just pick names out of the hat here, Adidas, Nike, and uh, Adidas and Nike, and and say uh, Brooks. Well, I'm just using three names. Um, so they've decided instead of getting all three to represent all three to have a variety, they'll either have one Nike because they know people will buy Nike, for example, because of the name recognition, or Nike and Adidas and drop Brooks. So you have all these reps showing up to these large corporate offices and basically, in, in, you know, for back of a, lack of a better term, you're fired. <laughs> you know, now we're having a layoff of sorts because these reps get a per commission based on what they sell. You know, the companies hire them as independent um, representatives for their companies in most cases and basically they're they've basically been fired by the merchand uh, merchandiser by the by the merchant so it's very interesting it's a whole different type of layoff and because they're independents at 1099 folks they don't come up on the radar at all so if they lose income they're still considered fully employed because they're self-employed so this is an interesting circumstance, and I'm seeing this. Um, you should have seen the relief on their, on a few of the reps' faces when we said, yes, we'll take some of your stuff, we'll take some of your stuff, and some of your stuff, because we have a very small store. So the amount of pieces that we're going to get from year to year really don't increase or decrease by that much. So uh, they were very, a uh, few of them, independently, of course, they weren't all in the room at the same time, um, basically expressed that, you know, wow, you know, you're buying our stuff this year. That's amazing because we're not even getting responses from them anymore from other larger merchants. 
So as a business owner, I find it interesting because that may be an opportunity for me to grow. Only problem is for me to grow, I would have to either get investors or go, well, there's three ways, get investors, take out a line of credit or go on, go on my own and take into whatever monies that I've collected or saved over the last few years, which I have saved some, that's my personal savings now. Um, so the question is, will this domino effect affect me in a positive way? In other words, can I open a second store? Now, for curiosity's sake, when I was down in the city, as I had said yesterday, I had noticed a lot of buildings that were uh, been for rent, and some of these signs looked pretty tattered. So they've been on the market for quite a while. In a lot of cases, which I find fascinating, which you don't see a lot of times, is usually the old storefront usually stays up on the wall. A lot of them have taken down the storefronts, you know, like Jones Department Store or uh, Jody's Dress Shop. You know, these things are taken down, and all it is is this ubiquitous for rent and the telephone number and in small print the name of the company. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to, I, call, I wrote down some of these numbers, I'm going to call them and find out what's going on, and I'll let you know what's going to happen. So <clears throat> as the spring goes on, we're talking, by the way, the, the real estate I'm referring to is Midtown to Upper New York, Upper Manhattan, very expensive. To get a corner sh shop somewhere in there, even if it's in Harlem, or in the case, in the one case that I'd seen with Spanish Harlem, is a holy grail, because there's a lot of pass-by um, business that you don't normally get. Like where I'm located in Queens, we don't we're a, we're a destination, not a pass-by location. Manhattan is a pass-by location. So if I can get a reasonable rent, even in a smaller shop, for the for the location. Because they're usually you're not because of all the real estate uh, that was gobbled up by the large universities. You know, it's, it's Manhattan is just a huge college town. It's 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 a gold mine if the opportunity is there and if people are buying. But I'm really curious about the um, real estate. So I'm going to make some calls. I'll let you know probably over the weekend what I hear. Kind of curious. So anyway. So just uh, I wanted I'm going to put that Bloomberg article about the 10% um, unemployment up, and um, and also the Patriot uh, uh, Trading Group. Where it is, it's about halfway down their uh, the Patriot video is about halfway down their page. It's really interesting. So check it out. So all right, guys, um, let me know what's going on with you and see if you've seen any kind of deflationary uh, real estate commercial real estate issues. Uh, I really want to know what's going on, and um, uh, you know, I just want to thank everybody for commenting, and um, let's see how we can make the best of this. You know, the awake, when you're awake, you can turn a disaster into an opportunity, not just survive. So let's let's see what's going on. All right, guys, peace.